Good evening. Yes, slightly later than usual. Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday, what can I say? Um, today's episode is number 612, and the episode, the episode title today is Why Does This Keep Happening to Me? And it might, <laughs> it might relate to the Super Bowl. I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. Before I jump into the topic, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do this every day. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I'm also help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, and that's what inspired these talks I do every day, including on Super Bowl Sunday, which might be later than usual, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And it's up to episode number 612 today, so 612, and the episode title today again is, Why Does This keep Always Keep Happening to Me? And of course, it was inspired by a conversation with a friend earlier today. Um, and I'm not going to use her example, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not going to use what she said as an example because that's too personal, but I'll share a couple of other examples. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, but because of the Super Bowl, I was at a party, just got back, got time set up and do this now um, so you can watch and interact with me now if you'd like. This is Facebook Live first and does go into YouTube later on in case you're watching it there and wondering what happened. It was on Facebook Live first. So let's just jump in. So. Why does this always keep happening to me? This actually, in a way, is a redo of a topic I've done a couple of times over the last couple of years, but it seemed the appropriate time to talk about it again because of what was inspired by a conversation I had earlier today. To share the conversation I had this morning in a more roundabout way so I don't out anything, the woman I was talking to, a friend of mine, was speaking about how she was having the same thing happening in a relationship after a relationship after a relationship that mirrored her relationship she had with her father. Like, period, every relationship. Something happened when she had with her father that was keeping being repeated by every single relationship she had. Not just romantic ones, but with any man. And this, excuse me, I'm, <coughs> I ate a lot of food and I'm still digesting it, so apologies if I sound a bit weird on the camera. Um, <laughs> staying true to my topic, this is fun. So, in the example what she's talking about is she was speaking about the fact that she had I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm looking at how to use this example without outing anything you know let me just talk about it I, I, I mean I'm not naming a name so it should be fine it will be fine yes it will be fine so she was speaking about the example of having met a guy at work that she was committing to do something with and I'm going to leave some of the details out just to keep it somewhat neutral that the, the issue she has, let's say it this way, the issue she has with it, all the men she knows, both romantically and non-romantically, is, hi Sue, nice to have you broadcast, thanks for being here, is that she would have men show up, or I should say she have men that wouldn't show up every single time. They would break their agreements, they wouldn't show up, they would not be dependable, she couldn't count on them, and it was really disheartening. And the thing she told me, so she already knew this, so you may not get this one, but she's, she's, advanced, she, she's an advanced student. <laughs> She was saying how she, all these relationships she had were, well, she, excuse me, all these interactions she had with men, because it wasn't just romantic relationships, it was every relationship. Men she worked with, other relationships, romantically, platonic. She had the same experience happen again and again where these men just simply flaked on her. They just wouldn't show up, they wouldn't be on time, wouldn't get their agreements, would let her know. Hi, Carrie, nice to see you my broadcast again. Two in a row, thank you for being here. Um, and she had already realized that this was mirroring back to her experience with her father. She's very clear, even as an adult, how her father has been a flake with her. He doesn't show up. He doesn't keep agreements. He's never available to her. And she said even when she was a kid, she would bring home a grade card. And she knew she had to do really well on her grades, but he never actually said anything. He didn't show up. He didn't respond. He didn't look at them. didn't go over them. didn't encourage her. didn't, didn't criticize her. didn't do anything. She just felt excluded the whole time. And that, frankly is a very, um, what does it say, it's not unusual, but it's a very clear example of a, ex an experience happening when you're younger, because what happened for her, that then was repeating itself as an adult relationship. And there was a definite like line, you could you connect the dots from what's happening currently in her present life with many different relationships with men. That what they were doing was the same thing that happened with her father with her. Now, if you look back at your own life, I'm sure you'll see a mirror of this where your adult relationships, again, not just romantically, but primarily romantically, were well, the same experience you had with partners 
remember it back to the relationship you had with one of your parents when you were younger. This is a fact of life, so to speak. Now, I'm not saying this is something where you need to, like, um, well, let me say it another way. It may be obvious to you, then again, it might not be. If it's not obvious, bear with me, because it might, it might reveal some things later on. If it is obvious, let's keep going on. Um, men and women, yes, it works both ways, where women have, generally speaking, it's not always, but generally speaking, women have a tie-in with their, with their male parent, their father, and men have a lot of times a relationship with their mother as a child that shows up in their adult relationships. It does sometimes work the other way around, meaning that where women may have a relationship with their own mother, that plays out in their own interaction with men as well, where men have this relationship issue with their father that has a play out with the women they meet too. So it's not just men with their mothers and women with their fathers. It's different. Or I should say it's, it's inclusive. But generally speaking, it's usually the opposite gender. That's the way it parallels because men usually are looking to date women and that, then the mother reminds them of that or they reminds them of their mother and women are often dating men who are basically reminding them of their father. And I'm not going to talk about gay relationships. The same things apply just the other way around. So bear with me if I don't mention the gender relationship you're, you're experiencing because it still applies because it's all about you. It's all internal. So yes, yeah, exactly, Dallas. So you're saying you actually always meet men like your mother. Yeah, that's the thing. There's a... Um, it's almost like, actually, I'm going to think about this before I say it. I had a, I reached for something and it wasn't quite there, so this may not be an accurate statement, but I know there's a tie-in to the sort of relationship you have with which, which parents. No, that's, that's not true. I was going to say, because which relationship is more stronger than other ones? And, and carry seeing women like your mother. Yeah, that, this is, this is, that's the normal, again, general, not the only one, but the general way it is. But sometimes the other way, as, as Della put, the way she's meeting men like her mother. Um, I was thinking back at my, my relationship with my... I actually had experience where the women I was dating I was early in my younger 20s reminding me of the relationship between my mother and my father. So it wasn't actually either one. It was both. Because the relationship I had with the woman mirrored the way the interaction was between my mother and my father. But it wasn't about which side was which. It was just the interaction was the key. So that was my own experience. The common denominator of all of this, the common understanding of all of this, is that those things happen in your adult life are birthed from when you were way younger with one of your parents, either one or both, or either. One, either or both, of the above. And most people don't do anything about that. And that's the challenge, unfortunately, because if you don't do anything about it, it's going to keep happening. It's almost a s automatic pilot thing. And this is the challenge, is that we may think we can make better choices and choose things differently, but we tend to find we keep repeating the same thing because what happens is we meet somebody we think, oh, this one's going to be different every time. But you notice a few months in, maybe a year or two in, maybe a few days in, you're going, this is starting to feel very familiar. Like the same as the last one, or the last one, or the last one, and with the parent. This wiring we have is part of the human psyche. It's normal for people to feel this way. It's also unfortunately normal that people don't do anything about it. But the truth is you can. And this is the thing I want to give you, is this um, key to a lot to open a door to something better, better, higher possibility. Because for most of us, we weren't necessarily raised with understanding that we get imprinted when we're very young. Yes, I'm using that word imprint. But this basically, um, sorry, I carry what you're saying. So this came out of your star chart, okay, as if it was designed. Like I was already born into this challenge for spiritual growth. That's going deeper than I'm going to go in this conversation, but it certainly has a possibility of going beyond the parental family, but it's also about what your star chart, what you're born into. So I wouldn't say there's difference, just another way of looking at it. So. Yes, there, Carrie, thank you for that, because it's not that, um, and yes, still, exactly, that's how we have loved, learned love, exactly, that's the whole thing, because we don't, and this is the thing, this is the, the thing, the thing, the thing, we learn as children, like a sponge taking the world around us, we don't have a discernment or, or a, or a um, filter system for what we're learning, we learn everything, so when we look about how we learn about love, we're taking everything around us that looks anything close to love and say that must be the way it is. We presume because the adults around us should be smarter than we are, not that we think that consciously, but in some sort of wiring we go, we are learning from the big people, therefore we must mimic, copy, take on what they believe is the right way of doing things so I can do the same thing. This is how abuse is passed along hereditarily. It's not biological, it's not chemical, I believe. It's actually learned behavior. And we learn it by being imprinted when we're extremely young before we know differently. 
in, psycho in psychological understanding, it's usually the first two, sorry, it's the first five to eight years at most, usually about five, six years, is where that imprinting happens. And because it's that young, we don't know that's right or wrong because we weren't taught differently. In fact, we think it's right because we watch our parents do it and we go, it must be the way it is. And then it takes on its life of its own as we get older. So that, and we've gone to our 20s and beyond, we're actually using those ways of loving without even realizing it. It's absolutely subconscious. We will do things to our partners or have to take these from our partners that we have no conscious awareness of. There you go, Dell. Yeah, 100%. Yes, you see it with yourself. And that's the thing. When you start to catch it, this is the thing. Awareness is the first step. When you become aware and going, hang on a second, I keep doing this. This is not right. So your first um, step is to become aware. So instead of saying the question, why does this always happen to me, which is the, the title of this topic, ask the question, is this happened before? Because if you think it's always happening to you, the obvious answer is yes. But then what you can do is like back and go, okay, so if it happened before, did it happen in every relationship? Because the odds are likely it did in most of them. And how much of the time did it happen? And do I remember when it first occurred to me that this was the right way of doing things? The first step, again, is awareness. The second step is to track it to its origin. When you can go back to the beginning to actually see where it got imprinted. And for most of us as adults, we look back at our parental relationships and see more clearly. Because when we're kids, we're looking kind of looking through rose-tinted spectacles. We're actually looking from a very naive place. But as conscious adults, generally speaking, we look back at our parents and go, that wasn't very healthy, that relationship or that paradigm or that lesson I learned. That's the second step. When you've got that vision, understanding, clarity, then you start doing the work to change it. And I'm, I'm sorry, I can't teach you that in this broadcast, but I can certainly teach you in it one-on-one -on -one because the work I've studied over, over the last, well, certainly in my two-year my master's program, we learned how to do this. It's a psychological process, basically. In a couple of ways to put it in simple, uh, broad strokes, it's rewiring the circuitry, it's reparenting the younger self, and it's teaching the younger self how to love authentically and cleanly. That's the, that's, the, that's the how. But it takes more than that just to do it. But once you have the understanding first, and then you can track it back, then you're halfway home to changing the pattern. Because if you don't want to keep repeating the same things you've been repeating, this is the way to do it. Is to go back and look and see what, what's happening, see the fact it is repeating itself and become aware of it. So you go back and then see the source of where it started from and particularly look at your parental relationships, either between them or between you and them, to see where what's happening in your relationships matches what happened to them. It's resonating for you, Sue, and it makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Well, I'm not, not this is not my, my creation. This, I know this stuff because I've learned this from other teachers. So I'm not coming from a place of like, I had to discover this myself. In fact, I would tell you, there's a book by Bruce Lipton called The Biology of Belief, which talks about this five early, early stage development for human uh, uh, children. The first five years of life will be getting printed. This has been researched and studied by many teachers. I just happen to have a set of skills, a particular set of skills, to quote somebody else. <laughs> so I was watching the, the, that clip in the video um, on YouTube the other day. So it's like my head. A particular set of skills that can help my clients to heal this and rewire it because of the masters, because I background in spiritual psychology, which really works with this. Don't be afraid to get help and be willing to ask for help to change because if you do that it rewires everything you don't have to keep repeating the same thing again and again you don't have to keep judging yourself for not having it solved because it's not something we can usually solve ourselves and get support guidance help from somebody who knows how to do it i'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so you can find out how i work and see if it lines up for you because obviously i know enough about this stuff and i do have some skills and i would love to help you and obviously if you want to get help that's where you can find me you don't have to. I'm just letting you know that's an option. The thing about it is this default automatic pilot, why do I keep doing this? Doesn't have to continue for the rest of your life. It's a, it, no, I didn't say that. It's a remarkably imprinted way of doing things that most people keep doing. You can watch people do the same thing again and again in their relationships. You may watch some celebrities who have the same relationship with their partners and they get, they get together, they get married, get divorced, or their relationship, they have a bust up, or they go through a situation that's abusive. Because the thing with celebrities is their stories are over the tabloids. So you can watch models in front of you on, in, at, on the different magazines or on websites and see, oh, they did that last year or the year before that. Same thing's happening for them. Now, if you know those celebrities and you know when they want to help, send them to me, I'll help them. 
But if you're dealing with this and you're aware that you're not the only one dealing with this, because you're not, just to be clear, I do invite you to get some support, whether it's for me or somebody else. I would personally recommend with me because this is my broadcast and you're watching my stuff, so I'm biased. <laughs> but I want to make sure you get this point. The why it keeps happening to you is because the wiring's inside. Yeah, Della, so you, you see you see patterns in your life. Welcome to the club. Because <laughs> the big first thing is awareness. Going, oh, that's a pattern there. That's going on. There's a lot of people are not even aware of it. They just keep repeating the same thing going, why does it keep happening to me? They don't, they don't actually do anything to go, how can I change it? They don't even become aware, look back far enough to go, oh, it keeps happening. I can change this. So, yes, you understand, which is good. Just seeing where I want to sit with this one. I think that's pretty much it. I want to keep this to, together. Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> indeed. So thank you. Thank you for your input. I appreciate your interaction. And also appreciate the fact you're getting this. Thank you for giving me visual confirmation that my message is landing. So thank you for that. Um, I was going to say, I think that's it. That's really basically the, the post I want to make. I want to bring this point home and I want to make this fairly brief because it is a Sunday night broadcast, post Super Bowl, way overfed. Um, and I and still got stuff to do tonight. But I thank you for watching and I hope this makes sense to you. Again, I'll put the link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can talk. Um, this is my Facebook Live I do every day. Again, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, but it's a little bit later tonight because of Super Bowl. Um, I will be back again tomorrow at 5 p.m. And replays in case you want to watch my broadcast. This is on Facebook Live on my personal page first. If you want to watch me live, you can join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time at facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays on Facebook go onto my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. On YouTube, I have a playlist under my channel, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to that and watch any of those in YouTube format. And thirdly, was that fourthly? Third or fourth. I have a playlist on iTunes, sorry, a podcast on iTunes called Messages from the Masculine, which is the audio versions of my earlier broadcasts, which I'm putting together slowly but surely. And you subscribe to that channel or that play podcast rather and watch those or listen to those audios whenever you want. Um, in your questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off, whether it's on here on Facebook or on YouTube, either one. And again, if you want help, reach out. Don't suffer in silence. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. Thank you, Sue. I'm grateful you're grateful for my time and my message. It's my pleasure and it's my calling and it's my had addiction now, I guess. 612 broadcasts. I've done it a lot, so that's not addiction, just a preference. I like doing this and I'm glad I can share information that's helpful. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m., not the same time, at 5 p.m. Pacific time, same channel, and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care of yourself. Bye.